maybe let's do like an executive summary and talk about some of your, what you would put, you know, in the Hall of Fame, like your greatest accomplishments, and then juxtaposed by some of your worst mistakes. And I, I, I set that question up with context because I'm, I'm curious to see what you're going to, you know, qualify as, as a great accomplishment. Um, and maybe the lessons learned from these mistakes. I think, again, some of these young people are afraid to make mistakes and, and you're very open you know, about being transparent and you know, fail fast and get back on the horse, that kind of thing. So I'd love to hear your point of view about that. Um, you know, my, my professional stakes have been meaningful, but they haven't been profound. I started a company called Red Envelope. I kept doubling down, investing more money. And uh, 10 years later, it went chapter 11. So I lost the majority of my net worth at the time. That was kind of devastating financially. Um, but that was probably my biggest professional mistake. But my biggest mistakes have been really personal. And that is, until I was uh, older in life, I didn't make really big investments in relationships. I, I got married without thinking through what really that commitment would involve and ended up hurting someone I cared a great deal about. Um, you know, the, the personal mistakes have been the profound ones. And I wish I had just been smarter about investing in relationships. I kind of woke up at the age of 40 and just found myself totally alone. And to be honest, it was a concerted decision. I just wanted to be an island. Um, so those, the, you know, my biggest mistakes have been personal failures. The business mistakes, I've always been able to get off, dust off my pants and get, you know, kind of step back to the plate. I've never had a career ending injury. America is a wonderful place. We always say we embrace failure, which is bullshit, but we tolerate it. And I've, you know, in, I've started, I think, eight businesses, and I'm kind of realistically three, three, and two. Uh, that's generous. But all you need is kind of one big win. I sold profit for 30 million. I sold my last company for 160. And all you need is a couple of those, and you're done. You're fine. Uh, but I had failures along the way, but they were never like career ending. They never, the real, the real failures were, um, were, um, uh, personal. And my biggest victories is um, uh, I've taught 5,500 students at Stern. I teach a course. I have an online ed startup called Section 4. I'll teach 14,000 kids uh, this year. I'm very proud of that. Tried to dramatically lower the cost of getting, of accessing my class. The value proposition is 80% of my class at Stern, which costs $7,000 for $700. And I'm raising two, what I think are secure healthy, loving uh, boys. I think a man's responsibility is to provide economic security and to garner resources so that you can take care of others. So I'd like to think that I'm acting like a man. Um, yeah, but the things I look to for success and failures are, are personal. How did you turn the ship around after you crashed into the rocks? You know, well, a lot of that is America. America gives, gives you second chances but I never lost, I would say I would never lost my mojo. I have a lot of friends that, that have a failure. I'm talking about in relationships, in, re in relationships. How did you? Oh, how, oh in my relationships? Did you get healthy? Um, it's small investments. It's like there's an analogy to investing in the market. Uh, 10 bucks a day can be a million bucks if you start at a young age. A text message, a thank you note, having the confidence as a man, and we're not good at this, we express affection by giving each other a hard time. Oh, Brian, you're an idiot. Or, you know, what a shithead you are, Brian. Rather than saying, calling and saying, wow, Brian, you're really an impressive man. I like your approach to work. We don't do that with each other. So small gestures, small investments, checking in on people, a little bit every day, just a little bit. And you wake up and it's like compounding interest in the markets. You wake up with a great friendship, a great relationship with your sister. And then there's a lot of research that shows the biggest regret people have at the end of their lives. And my colleague at NYU, Adam Alter, did this research on, look, talked to people about palliative care, is they'd wish they'd been less hard on themselves. So bringing forgiveness to yourself and to others is the key to having a healthy relationship with yourself. One of the, the sayings I love is life isn't about what happens to you. It's about how you respond to what happens to you. So keep in mind, nothing's ever as good or as bad as it seems. And when you screw up, it's not entirely your fault. And on the flip side, recognize when you're killing it and you're doing great, you picked the right stock or you got promoted, that that's not entirely your fault either and try and have some humility. Well, now we just come back full circle. When I, when I was talking about the high school students worrying or college students worrying about having it all figured out 
you know, before they graduate. And that's, that's fantastic advice, which is, you know, uh, have believe in yourself, but also invest in these relationships. Don't worry too much about too much. You know, not everything's your fault. <laughs> uh, uh, some things are. You, you know, you have a certain amount of control in some things and then mostly no control in others. Uh, but all you can do is try and just be your best self, a little bit better than you were uh, yesterday, today, and, uh, and you move forward. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that, <laughs> you know, tracking my roots.